I'm Angus. And I'm Tom. Today we're going to be doing a rotisserie spit roast. Yeah, that sounds really good, but you can't do a spit with two people. And I'm Michael. Today we're going to be doing a rotisserie chicken on the spit with smoke and dagger. Cheers, boys. probably you know the number one trick you want to look out for when you're doing a rotisserie spit generally pretty pretty straightforward the magic's in the the way that the rotisserie spins it's basically going to be self basting the meat so as all the fat and the chicken skin renders which will keep that really juicy moist flavor that you're looking for yeah spits are a pretty special occasion normally you got anything special planned for us today well today we're going to be using duck fat you can use any sort of fat or anything to help crisp up the skin. We've decided to double down on the poultry and go with the duck fat uh, basting before we cook it. I always love a good double down. Uh, I've seen like a lot of people tie up their chickens and flop around. Is that easy to do or is, you know, is it more of an advanced move? It's a pretty important part of cooking on a rotisserie because it keeps everything still. It helps uh, cook things evenly so you'll get the the most amount of surface area for the, the skin to get crispy. In terms of how difficult it is, I don't think so. It's the sort of thing you could even do blindfolded. Challenge accepted. All right, lads, I think it's enough talking. I think it's time we get this meat spinning. Okay, we're gonna start prepping some of the ingredients for the stuffing now. And it's as simple as dicing the onion. You wanna cut it fairly fine because you don't want big lumps of onion in your stuffing. You can actually use a food processor. I think for this cook we're going to go for a bit more rustic style with the chunks in there. Straight over the coals we're going to cook it on a hot skillet. So there's various ways people do this. My preferred option is just to not cut the whole way through. You'll end up with the onions staying together and you can get that really quite fine before the onion falls apart for your final few cuts. It's a little known technique, but if you slap your onion first, it's going to reduce the chances of you crying as you cut it. Something that you guys can all try at home. We're going to do a similar thing with the garlic. Just chop it up really fine. And if you rest the, the edge of the blade against your knuckle, you can get those fine cuts with no risk of hurting yourself. <laughs> so the next thing I like to do is use the side of the blade and make a mess of Angus's kitchen. So this just helps crush the garlic to a degree. Next up we have some bacon rashers and these are just going to be going straight on the barbecue. We want all this fat to render out and disappear into the, uh, into the bird. A few moments later. Hey man, how the hell you doing? I've been just fine living life with the new sand. In my mind, all I hear is music. Watching your mouth move, damn you look stupid. I feel like everyone's a stranger. Small talk with your narcissistic neighbor. She's real hot, but they said to never date her. Ha, I agree, but you did and I hate her. You wanna get away? and finely cut. So the next step is going to be to cut up these herbs. So we've got a mixture here of parsley, 
uh, thyme, dill, and some garlic chives. The mix that you use here is, doesn't matter too much. It's the flavor profile you'd like and how you'd like it to smell. So these are gonna mix with the, the rest of the stuffing ingredients and just give that lovely smell they are from the garden. I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse, wash off any dirt. So same with all the other ingredients. I'm just gonna give these a very rough chop, big pieces. So all those fresh herb smells have now been released. Straight in on top of the bacon. And we are looking very close. So the next step is to get our bread. This essentially is the, the base material. So the rest of the ingredients we put in were for flavor. And this is what actually makes uh, stuffing into stuffing, it's the bread. So you can cut this very roughly. Normally use three or four slices of bread uh, per chicken. So because we're doing two, I'll just use the whole loaf. So now we've got all our bread and we're just gonna, same as everything else in this stuffing, just cut it into fairly small pieces. And this can be very rough. It's, uh, going to be all mixed together in the end. So once you're happy that these are all into relatively small pieces, into the bowl with the rest of the ingredients. Combine and blend all the ingredients. Suck up all the chicken juices, the bacon juices, and we're going to be left with some absolutely lovely stuff in the end. And that's looking absolutely delicious. So the next step for this juicy, moist chicken, to take about half the stuffing, give them a good tour, and you just want to put it in the bird as deeply as possible. A bit of a mess here. <laughs> just going to take a couple of these bamboo skewers that I've marinated in water, and we're just going to pin those straight through keep all that lovely flavour inside instead of it dropping down onto the grill. It won't matter too much if it does, if some of it drops out, but this way it just keeps, maximises the amount of flavour in that juicy bird. So now that we've got this all stuffed, we're ready to start trussing it together. Now the purpose of trussing, to keep, keep all the bits where you want them to stay. So it'll help cook the bird evenly. You'll get that nice crispy skin that improves the amount of surface area you've got. So what I like to do is get around four chicken lengths worth of string first. Cut that off and I lay that across the chopping board. So next we're gonna to wanna to come under the wings and tie these two legs together. So there's a few different methods. You can either tie them both at the same time, or what I'm actually gonna do is wrap it once around each leg before pulling those two together. Just wrap those nice and tightly. And there you have it. Now that we've trussed this juicy bird, we're gonna rub it in duck fat. And grease me up, woman! Since duck fat, you can use olive oil. Uh, there's a lot of options. Just going to cause that delicious golden coloured skin. Right, now that we've liberally applied that duck fat, we're going to start applying the rub. So today we're going with a Smoky Joe's rub called Pixie Dust. Should give a nice flavour, a bit of paprika in there. And we're going to add this fairly liberally. Arguably it's almost impossible to over season uh, when you use these sorts of rubs. So I like to go quite heavy on it. We do the top and the bottom of the bird and then when it's on the barbecue, I like to apply it again as it's rotating just to get the sides and any other pieces. And that is looking absolutely delicious. The aim of the game here is using nothing but my deft fingers, trust this chicken more skillfully than Mr. Dawn, guiding instructions, my comrade Tom from Smoking Dagger Barbecue. All right, Tom, take it away. What do I do? All right, mate, first thing you're going to need to do give that bird a good slap. Good stuff. Tuck the wings, so the wings are away from your body at the moment. Yep. Good, give them a bit of a flap. Get these birds flight. Caw, caw, caw. Next, you're gonna wanna grab some twine that's on your left hand side. Just get a few lengths of that going. Uh, go downwards. Yep, that, ooh, that, that's it. Yep, you've got it. Nice. The chopping board, so I want you to go forward about Go up first because you're caught in the chicken. Go up and forward about 10 centimeters. Face out. This is up. Right, go forward now 10 centimeters. Down. And you went back. Oh my god. Now you're gonna slowly slide that towards your chicken as you are doing. Or just just <laughs> flop it on top. Uh, now you're gonna bring that twine back towards yourself. Give her a crisscross. 
Now we're gonna, one, one at a time, grab the leg. Yep, that's the leg. For a twirl. Yep, looks, looking good. Other leg. That's it. Give her a twirl. Twirl. All right, now we're gonna grip and rip. That's good, that's good, that's really good. All right, now you just need to come together. I got one piece of string, what, what, what am I doing? All right, right hand's missing the string. Yep, uh, inch forward. Yep, that's it, you've, you've got the string in your fingers, mate, in your right hand. What yeah. have you done? <laughs> you tell me. Yeah, keep wrapping around like you're doing. That looks good. Perfect, take your blindfold off. Creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they want to go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing Got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite, they feeling Alright, that wraps it up here today at Smoky Dagger Barbecue. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. If you've got any ideas for future videos, hit us up in the comments. Till next time, cheers.